Hey creeps, it's Cameron and welcome to Library Macabre. Today I have a 56 book book haul. It's funny, when I started getting all of these books together, I was thinking, man, I did a great job this month. I didn't buy too many books in February. And then I counted them all and I realized, yeah, I still bought 56 books. Of course, I did not spend very much money on these books. Most of them I bought at secondhand bookstores for a dollar or less. Used bookstores are my friends. All of the books I'm gonna be showing you are categorized into groups. So if there's a certain group of books that you are not interested in, you can jump ahead by using the timestamps down below. So if I start showing a bunch of Babysitter's Club books and you're like, Cameron, I read books about machete wielding maniacs. Why would I want to see Babysitter's Club? I totally get it. It's okay. That's why the timestamps are there. You're welcome. But anyway, enough rambling. Let's get into the books. First up, I've got a big stack of mysteries. I have a few adult mysteries and some Nancy Drew, Hardy Boys. I did find out about this cozy mystery series called The Haunted Bookshop Mysteries. I'd never heard of these before. Uh, usually I try to keep an eye out for any bookish related uh, cozy mysteries or cozy mysteries involving ghosts or Halloween. And this kind of combines all three of those things, which is awesome. I found The Ghost and the Haunted Mansion, The Ghost and the Femme Fatale, and The Ghost and the Dead Man's Library. These are all by Alice Kimberly. Reading the back of these, the series is about a woman named Penelope who owns a bookstore that is haunted by the ghost of a hard-boiled private detective from the 1940s have to read it. Next up, we have quite a few Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys books. The first one is the Nancy Drew Files, book number 38, The Final Scene by Carolyn Keene. I played the PC game of The Final Scene back when I was a kid. It was always one of my favorite games. So I was really curious to see that there's actually a book of this. So I'm excited to read this. It sounds mostly similar to the computer game. So we'll see how this is. I also found Nancy Drew number 122. The Message in the Haunted Mansion, which is yet another PC game that I played when I was a kid. So I'm excited to give that a read and see how it compares to the game. Number 165 in the Nancy Drew series, The Crime Lab Case. This one's from 1984. We have Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys Super Sleuths. I have a few Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys Super Mysteries, but I had never heard about this particular series. This one's completely different. Look at the back of this. It says, join the club, Walden Books Children's Happy Birthday Club. Do you remember Walden Books? I do. And I think that is awesome. That's totally old school. And I would have loved to have a birthday party at Walden Books. That would have been awesome. And on the front cover, it even says, compliments of Walden Books and Kool-Aid. <sighs> Gotta love the 80s. Now, these were the Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys super mysteries that I'm familiar with. I have quite a few of these. This one is called Passport to Danger. These are a lot of fun. I read quite a few when I was a kid and many when I was in high school. They're just a good time and they're quite a bit thicker than a lot of the other Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys books. So I definitely recommend these. I also found number 69 in the Hardy Boys case files. This one is called Mayhem in Motion. And lastly for Hardy Boys, I found number 66 in the original series. This one is called The Vanishing Thieves. It's a first printing. I was very happy to find this. If anybody out there likes Hardy Boys or Nancy Drew and you wanna see my whole collection, I am planning on doing a big video about my entire collection soon. Whether or not I do that in the next month or two, it really just depends on the demand. So if you wanna see it, please let me know down below in the comments. Last up for the mysteries, I found this book in the Power Boys adventure series. This one is called The Mystery of the Flying Skeleton. I never heard of this series before, but I can tell, you know, it's a bit of a Hardy Boys knockoff. This was published by Whitman in 1964. I will probably give this a read this summer. Remember when I mentioned Babysitter's Club? Well, I wasn't kidding. I was lucky enough to find a whole bunch of these secondhand in February made my whole month. So as I've talked about before, I, I never really read the Babysitter's Club when I was a kid. I, of course, was more of a spooky kid. I liked Goosebumps and Arl Stein and all of that. I was not interested in reading Babysitter's Club, which I referred to as girl books. Forgive me, I was five years old. But now, as an adult, I want to read Babysitter's Club. <laughs> I think the reason is I'm just so nostalgic for the 90s and I will literally read anything from that time. And these kinds of books are just fun and light. You can turn your brain off. You don't have to think about anything. So I found a whole bunch of Babysitter's Club. These were all a dollar a piece. I think I found about 20 of them. Also, these are all first printings. 
which is just awesome. So first up we have book number six, Christie's Big Day. Book number 12, Claudia and the New Girl, Stacy's Mistake, Mary Ann and the Search for Tigger. 39, Poor Mallory. Number 40, Claudia and the Middle School Mystery. Number 50, Dawn's Big Date. 56, Keep Out Claudia. Special edition number three, Babysitter's Winter Vacation, which includes the postcard in the middle of the book. I was really happy to find that. Special edition, Babysitter's Club, Shannon's Story. And next we have a bunch of the mystery books. Mystery number five, Mary Ann and the Secret in the Attic. The Mystery at Claudia's House, Dawn and the Halloween Mystery. I'm excited to read that one, guess why? Christy and the Haunted Mansion. Number 19, Christy and the Missing Fortune. Abby and the Secret Society, Mary Ann and the Music Box Secret, and mystery number 34, Mary Ann and the Haunted Bookstore. There's just something about haunted bookstores. And we also have four of the portrait collection books. So the first one is Christie's book, Claudia's book, Don's book, and Stacy's book. So those are all the Babysitter's Club books that I bought last month. If you've read any of these, please let me know what your favorites are because I've still not read any of them. I'm actually trying to find some of the earlier books, but I am planning on doing like a big binge read soon where I go through a whole bunch of these. I don't know, maybe I'll try to see how many I can read in one week. Next, we're gonna stay in the 80s and the 90s and we are gonna look at some Sweet Valley High. I found this hardcover book club edition of Sweet Valley High, The Stolen Diary. This one was for the Especially for Girls series. I also got a first printing of Sweet Valley High number 26, Hostage. Lots of crazy stuff happens in this series, apparently. People get kidnapped, people are murdered, and then come back in the next book as if they were never murdered to begin with. I'm really excited to start binging through some of the books in this series. I've just heard crazy things. I also got Sweet Valley High Special Edition Spring Break. This is actually another first printing. I was really happy to find that. Sweet Valley 109. This one is called Double Crossed. This one actually takes place at Halloween time. And then we have Murder in Paradise. See what I was saying? <laughs> People are murdered, then I'm sure they're gonna come back in the next book. Look at that step back artwork. So cool. I also found four of the thriller editions in the Sweet Valley University series. So we have He's Watching You, Kiss of the Vampire, The Roommate, and Dead Before Dawn. I also got this Karate Kid book that was thrown in as a freebie in one of my orders from eBay. So that was cool. I did not know I was gonna be getting this, but uh, it was a nice little surprise. I love the Karate Kid. Next, we're gonna look at the comic books that I got, and then I'll move on to some of the horror books. So first up, we have Fangs by Sarah Anderson. This is a really nice, cloth bound book that picks up a lot of lint. <laughs> uh, this is beautiful. I actually read this in February and it was a lot of fun. It's basically just about this vampire and this werewolf that are in this relationship. And it just shows all of their different cute scenarios throughout their relationship. It's, it's really fun. I also got Snug, a collection of comics about dating your best friend from Katana Comics as well as the sequel, which is called In Love and Pajamas. This is just a really cute, quirky set of comics about the artist and her relationship with her boyfriend and just the funny things they get up to. It's very relatable and I really enjoyed it. All right, we're moving on to the horror. So I have a few vintage horror adult books and then a few for young adults and then some middle grade horror like Goosebumps. I found a beautiful copy of Darkly the Thunder by William W. Johnstone. I actually found this on Etsy for only $8, which was very surprising to me. There's no spine creases. The book is just in beautiful shape. Published by Pinnacle in 1990 is Precog by Lee Dugan. I have read one other book by Lee Dugan before, which was called Schoolhouse. Loved it. I actually thought it was a really fun book and it was pretty well written for a book published by Pinnacle. So I'm excited to check out more of his books. I now have all four of the books that he wrote back in the 80s and 90s. So I'm thinking I need a binge read soon. Moving on to the vintage young adult horror. I have The Nightmare Club, book number four, The Mask. This is by Nick Barron. I recently read uh, book number seven in the Nightmare Club series, which was called Sleigh Ride. That was also written by Nick Barron. And I actually really enjoyed that book. I thought it was dark and twisted and very upsetting and not what I expected at all from a 90s young adult horror book. I was expecting something cheesy and fun, but it was actually really 
dark and deep and it messed with me a little bit. And I actually talked more about that in my wrap up, which I will post up here so you can go and give it a watch. Uh, Nick Barron wrote that book. He also wrote this one. So I'm excited to see what this one's like, if it's quite as uh, distressing as that one. I also found a beautiful copy of The Christmas Killer by Patricia Windsor. This was published in 19... 91 by Point. So this is a Point horror book. And of course, I've been trying to collect all of the Fear Street books. I have my nice Fear Street collection back here. I'm going to be doing a video about those very soon, just kind of updating you on some of the other books that I got. But I did find a couple more. So we have First Date, beautiful first printing. I got this one from Etsy, as well as Bad Moonlight, which is a super chiller. And this is one of my favorite covers ever. I love that cover. I love the colors. It's just awesome. And speaking of R.L. Stein, a couple of weeks ago when I posted my Goosebumps collection video, I noticed that I was missing quite a few of the Goosebumps Presents books, which are books that are kind of like uh, episode tie-ins where they take stills from each of the TV episodes and puts them in the book. And I noticed that one of the books I was missing from that series was number nine, Go Eat Worms. So I looked it up on eBay and I found it for like $3, which was really cool. So this is in beautiful condition. It's a first printing. And what was really cool is that when I got this in the mail, there was a note from the seller that says, Cameron, thank you for your purchase. I actually watch you on YouTube. So this was exciting for me. I had just finished watching your Goosebumps collection video when I got your purchase. I thought that was awesome. I That actually happens quite often where I will order a book on eBay and they're like, hey, you're that guy from YouTube. But it was funny that she had just been watching my Goosebumps collection when I ordered this. It's just, you know, those little synchronicities in life. Now, a lot of you have probably read the Choose Your Own Adventure series before, but there was a series that I didn't know about until I started working on the bookmobile for my local library. A lot of kids were asking for the Choose Your Own Nightmare series. And I was like, what is this? So I looked it up and it turns out that they are being reprinted now as new editions. But it was a series in the 90s that I somehow missed when I was a kid. I would have been all over it had I known about them, but sadly I didn't. So I ordered a couple of these really nice uh, library hardcover editions. So we have book number four, Castle of Darkness, and book number five, The Halloween Party. I would really love to collect all 18 books in the series, especially in these really nice uh, Gareth Stevens hardcovers. These are really well bound. And last but not least, I did manage to find one book in the Adventures of the Bailey School Kids series. This is book number 21, Mummies Don't Coach Softball. These books are really cute. They're breezy, they're fun. Since the weather is nice, I've been kind of in the mood to go back and pick up some of these. So I was happy to find this one. It's a nice first printing. Yeah, if you've read Bailey School Kids, let me know down below in the comments because not too many people know about these and they're really, really cute. Anyway, those are all of the books that I bought in the month of February. Thank you all so much for watching and don't forget to give this video a like because it really helps me out. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next episode of Library Macabre. Later creeps. Thank you.